five or six years ago when I would say that India is likely to become a superpower. Many foreigners and India haters would mock my words. And back in Poland, almost nobody would believe me. However, today, the likelihood of India becoming a superpower is discussed by the so-called prominent personalities. So yes, India's enemies, pay attention. India's time is coming and almost nothing can stop it from happening. So please, pay attention to these words. India is one of the hopes for mankind. I am very happy to see that India is ready to shoulder its global responsibility and be a force for peace. These are not my words. These are the words of Asle Toye, the deputy leader of the Norwegian Nobel Committee. While highlighting that India's power is growing, he said, We have seen empires rise and fall, we have seen the Raj, we have seen the American Empire. And then he also talks about the big likelihood of India becoming one of the superpowers. And in relation to the Nobel Peace Prize, he said, Well, I think any leader in the world should aspire to receive the Nobel Peace Prize. Any leader should try to do enough for peace in the world to deserve this award. The deputy leader of the Norwegian Nobel Committee also said that it's interesting to see that India that has in record time gone from being a developing country to becoming one of the primary economies of this world. And very importantly, he mentioned that when India speaks, it tends to be with a friendly voice and without threats. Here, it's important to remember that India's work for peace and humanitarian service is well known. India doesn't just help those who it shares a good relationship with. India's generosity and kindness have even benefited those who are considered India's enemies. Recently, the world witnessed how India helped Turkey after it suffered from a massive earthquake. It has even helped a country like Pakistan, which has fought wars against India. India's Ministry of External Affairs observes that when it comes to foreign aid or assistance to other countries, India's approach is mainly human-centric and India's development cooperation does not come with any conditions. Cash assistance, food assistance, humanitarian assistance, providing vaccines for free and even helping countries when they face foreign currency liquidity shortage. India has done it all. And yes, of course, India's aid beneficiaries also include nations which were looted, invaded or colonized by the Western colonial criminal states. It was observed that India has extended development assistance in the form of concessional lines of credit worth more than $30 billion to 65 countries. India has completed numerous iconic infrastructure projects which include the parliament building of the Gambia, the presidential palace in Ghana, a power project in Sudan which provides a third of the country's power, a power project in Rwanda which provides a quarter of the country's power, just to name a few. India helps them even when it never colonized them. Yes, in some ways, India may enjoy the fruits of the aid that it provides to other nations, but I do hope that someday the world understands the difference between the Western conditional aid and India's spirit of Vasudev Kutumbakam. Here, very quickly, I will give you one example. The West's hidden agenda or conditional aid was seen when Lithuania, which is an European Union member, cancelled its decision to donate COVID-19 vaccines to Bangladesh after the country abstained during the United Nations General Assembly vote on condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine. To understand more regarding how the West has treated others selfishly, please watch this episode. Today, the deputy leader of the Norwegian Nobel Committee is praising India, and to be honest, I can't really tell what his true motives are. But what we know for sure is that we should not take the body that he's associated with so seriously, as in the past, Nobel Prizes have been awarded to those who have contributed to mass murders or violence. One example could be Henry Kissinger, a racist American man who many Indians and Bengali Hindus will never be able to forget. The West and its leaders have a track record of changing colors for their selfish geopolitical greed or interest. But regardless, the words about India that Asle Toya said here do make a lot of sense. See you again.